and I would hope that the Tim Austin team would also um, be working on similar thoughts. I think we should probably do that in the context of uh, issues in the code base and the uh, in the incubator. But then I think you know the other aspects are going to be working on the requirements and use cases, and so we'll have a track for that. And uh, we could have track for project lifecycle and template, and for the code of conduct. Chris, I went ahead and muted everyone, um, so you may need to come back off mute. Sorry. Oh, I'm unmuted. Okay. So I was good. I had finished up what I thought the the various work items we had to cover were. Um, again, I would hope that you know with that many people that we could break out into into breakouts. Uh, but I'd be interested to see if anyone had thoughts about other things we should be doing. Either everybody's on mute or there are no other ideas. Chris, this is Patrick. I was going to mention when we cover the requirements work group that I would like to do a breakout um, during the face-to-face -face focused on uh, use cases and requirements. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's exactly what I thought we'd have. So, Todd, I think... You know, we'll start with that and flesh it out, send it to the mailing list, and uh, and we'll try and finalize it next week. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, one question: in in how far do we have to? Can we bring in the use cases out of the technical steer core, or do the, the they come via the the governing board? Anybody can bring use cases. Okay. Decision on the overall outline: who takes that steer core or, or board? I'm sorry. Who, who takes the final decisions on what use case we want to cover? Is that within the technical steer core, or, or does does the board get oh. input here? Yeah, I think the TSC. But I mean, the work group should, you know, work through, build consensus, and bring a proposal to the TSC. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the TSC will decide. Okay. Thanks. Hi, this is Austin Hill uh, from Blockstream. I just joined. I, I apologize for being. A few minutes late. Uh, are we talking about use case development for the TSC in general, or for the hackathon that is being planned in a couple weeks? I think in general, for you know, building up use cases and requirements for what we'd like to do from a hyperledger project perspective. Okay. Thanks. Do we have a, a repository or a standard place where we're asking everyone to uh, start depositing a use case or, or? Well, I think that's actually the next uh, card on the agenda. Is that right? Yeah, I think Patrick will run through that in just a minute here. But in answer to your question, Austin, we don't have anything formal yet, but we need to do that. So 
I suggest, Todd, we go to the next item. Great, sounds good. Uh, so, Patrick, uh, is, is your preference that we make you presenter to run through your updates? You no, know, I just, <clears throat> it's okay, I just talked to it. I'm ready to go. Okay, so, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I sent out an email last week asking for volunteers. I got six volunteers. I'll read the the names. Uh, if you had intended to volunteer uh, and sent me something, maybe I missed it, or uh, and there's still an opportunity. So I have uh, Thomas at uh, Digital Asset Holdings, uh, Benedict uh, Primrose at Accenture, Judy Priest at Cisco, Stefan at uh, uh, I can't pronounce that Deutsch Bourse and uh, Emmanuel at the Accenture Technology Labs. Uh, if you had intended or still want to volunteer, please send me an email, uh, patrick.holmes at intel.com, and I will get you on the list. Um, not a lot of progress this week. I'm coming up to speed on the best way to, to do this. I'm talking to other people at Intel about best practices. I plan to talk um, to Todd as well uh, about, uh, about that. And um, I've also started collecting use cases. I agree we do need a place where we can put them rather than just sending them to me. Um, it was clear, though, that one of the first questions that's going to come up is what is the scope of these use cases? Right? I've been sent use cases for the music industry um, and use cases for um, health studies. Uh, medical studies. So, so we need to figure out the, the scope, and that's one of the first things we'll be working on. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'd like to do a, a breakout during the technical face-to-face, -face, but time it in such a way that the people working on this don't miss, you know, some of the most critical uh, meetings. For example, if anyone from uh, uh, IBM is going to be talking about the architecture of uh, your contribution, you know, I don't want to miss that. So we'd, we'd have to schedule it around. And uh, that's it. Any questions or comments for Patrick? Yeah, hi, uh, Vikas. Sorry, it's uh, Vikas from CLS Bank. Um, I just wanted to know, is there an end date for collecting these use cases? Because we haven't submitted any, and we would like to submit a use case from the payments and settlements. Uh, wonderful. No, I have not put together a schedule yet or an, an end date for use cases. For now, you can uh, send them to me if you want, uh, and I will figure out a way to, to get all those posted. Or you can wait until that's set up, either way. Okay. So, I, I apologize, I'm mobile here. Uh, I didn't hear a name from IBM, is that right? Because I think we have somebody. I think maybe we have to get them to say, hey, me. Was there somebody from IBM in that list, Patrick? No, there was not. OK, I'll make sure they okay. reach out to you. Any other questions for Patrick? Patrick, did you already, it is just Tomasz, uh, Digital Asset, uh, did you already decide some kind of uh, a collaboration platform so we can um, continue this, uh, not in a bilateral talk, but um, in the public? No, but I will get that set up, uh, say, this week, before the next meeting. Okay. 
Sounds good. Any other questions? Right, Todd, what's next? Uh, next up was the white paper. Ah, white paper. Right. So I put an outline out in a uh, Google Doc. Uh, shared it. And then I think somebody had proposed that we use some tool, but I've never heard of the tool before and wasn't clear how that would be used. I don't know if they're on the call or... I mean, I, I figured we'd just use a Google Doc and edit and comment. Maybe somebody could lead the actual editing. But I welcome any thoughts. I think Google Docs are a, a pretty powerful collaboration tool. Right. right. I, I thought it was probably fine. So um, I haven't had a chance to check this morning to see if anybody had uh, uh, had any comments on the outline. I looked through it, and for me, the outline looks perfect. You can start with that, I think. Okay. All right. So I was going to start adding some of the content from the IBM white paper that I thought was appropriate. And again, just we just sort of comment and and uh, edit excuse over me. Each other. Uh, there, well, excuse me. Where, where was this? Uh, um, Already shared. I, I'm not sure. I saw this document. I know I sent it to the uh, the mail here. So it's not not shared. It was a mail. The uh, the link is in the agenda as well that uh, Todd had sent out um, to the GitHub repo. Okay. All right, I'm sitting down. <laughs> Let's see. Where's... Come on, I've been disconnected from the thing. Sorry, I'm I'm reconnecting to the go to meeting. Um, so again, I, I suggest we just um, get in there and and edit it. Um, is there anybody that would like to um, take on the, the task of being the lead editor for the white paper? Chris, uh, this is Dave. Dave Wall. Um I could take on that role if you need someone. Oh, awesome! Thanks, Dave. Um, I will then make you an editor when I get a chance to. Thank you. All right, Todd. What was next? Yeah, so moving on, the next thing is uh, an update and discussion around the DAH IBM experiment progress. Ah, yes. So um, I know IBM has put uh, the code into the incubator repo. I didn't, uh, I looked yesterday and I didn't see the DAH code. So, Tomash, is there an ETA for getting the DAH code uploaded? Yeah, it is 
uh, it is available in its previous location. Uh, I did not push it yet to the collaboration space, but it's, ah. it would, was actually the same thing. All right, so let's let's, let's put that in there, um, and then um, you know I, I think you know from an IBM perspective, and I'm not sure who's on from IBM, but maybe Ben, uh, maybe you could give us an update. I know that we've been working on some of the um, some of the aspects of the proposal. Um, and maybe Ben, if you're on, you could update us. Um, yeah, if if you um, you look into the uh, the OBC repo at this point, uh, there's a number of issues that we have created uh, to work toward that and prepare for the face to face. So specifically, we are looking at um, the ability to integrate uh, a interpreter. Uh, just use any interpreter. We we picked a uh, we picked up the the um, interpreter from Bitcoin um, source code and um, and try to call that interpreter from a chain code so that we can we 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 want to prototype the ability to pass in a uh, a, a Bitcoin transaction uh, through OBC system and to the interpreter. And be able to uh, interpret by that interpreter, and turn around and update the the the, the um, transaction log uh, as appropriate. So that's the the path that that uh, we are exploring at this point, and hopefully we'll be able to show that um, kind of like show and tell at the face to face meeting. Great. Now, are there any aspects that people could start working on before the face-to-face? -face? We have any stories that people could start work on? In, uh, this is Joel. I'll just point out that we've we've uh, done a lot of work on binding into into the Bitcoin interpreter, uh, both the Bitcoin interpreter and into uh, uh, the blockchain elements uh, with components. Uh, so feel free to ping us on, on any help needed on that side. Yeah, we were we were wondering about whether we should just pick up your interpreter and 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 inter integrate that, but uh, but we couldn't find it, um, uh, so so we decided to go with Bitcoin interpreter. But uh, I, I I believe that it would be a very simple um, uh, switch for us. Yeah. Okay. We we can help out and point point to the right uh, places where that is if it if it uh, helps technically to to integrate. All right, great. Okay. Anyone have any questions, concerns, thoughts on uh, the current proposal and the experiment? If not, I think we can move to the next item. And I'm just trying here. Agenda. I think next step was. Um, the code of conduct uh, Arnaud had sent out code of conduct. yeah two options. All right, Arnaud, hi. Would you like yep. to? Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Arnaud speaking. So yeah, code of conduct. The TSC decided we should have a uh, code of conduct. Some people say, well, do we even need one? Unfortunately, the kind of things that nobody would like. I mean, everybody would like to be able to do without. But experience shows again and again that it's useful to have one, and it's become common practice. Um, when we started discussing this, Chris suggested we take the Cloud Foundry one. I mean, obviously, there's no point in developing one from scratch. There are many to choose from. And of course, the question then is, well, which one do you choose? Um, so Chris suggested we use Cloud Foundry one. I took a pass at taking the text and basically trying to just do more or less a query replace of you know the name. I made some small adjustment when it referred to things that were specific to Cloud Foundry, but it's more or less the one from Cloud Foundry. There was one significant change, I would say, which is that in the Cloud Foundry code of conduct, it basically it basically talks about the fact that it's bad to remain silent in front of bad actions. And so, and it says that in a fairly negative sense. 
at least some people felt it was pretty negative. So I replaced this by with a with a, um, a piece of text that I took from the Dirt 3C one, um, which is which you know aims at the same, which aims to the same goal, but as a more positive uh, wording. And so that's the last bullet of the keep in mind section. And then uh, uh, Mick Bowman, actually from Intel, made a reference to the Dirt 3C code of conduct. He thinks that it's uh, it's pretty small and 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 sharp, and so I'm actually very familiar with Dirt 3C myself, and I like it too. So I thought, well, what the hell? We don't have to force anyone to use one particular one. We could just take two options and have a quick vote, decide which one people people prefer. So I also did the same basic uh, operation, taking the Dirt 3C code of conduct and adapt it to a project. Um, uh, you know, in general, my sense of how they compare is the Dirt 3C one, uh, the, you know, just from a structure point of view, the text was designed in such a way that the code itself is very short and crisp. And so it fits into nine bullets that fits in half a page, which is kind of neat. And the way they achieve that is by having a bunch of references to terms that are defined in a glossary, which itself is much, much longer. Um, there is um, one uh, difference, in my opinion, um, which is significant, is that the Code of Conduct from Cloud Foundry talks about what you're supposed to do when you step down, when you retire from the project. And it talks about how you should do that. You know, it should be considerable into like, you know, not just dropping the ball and disappearing, but making sure that the project doesn't suffer from retiring from the project. That thought is not actually covered in the W3C1. Uh, I don't know if it's an issue. We could add it if, if we wanted. Obviously, all of this can be edited at will. But so that's, you know, I think there are two valid options. And uh, rather than forcing one particular, as I said, I think we could have a quick vote and uh, decide which one to go for with. And as I said, amendments can be done either way. Uh, so thank there you. Was one, there was one comment made against the, uh, it's actually, it was entered by Alicia against the Dirt3C1, but it has to do with incident procedure section, which actually exists in both versions, both options. Uh, Alicia mentioned that, you know, it, sometimes it can be a crime, and then the, the leaders of the project may have to report to authorities, basically. Um, I think that's true. I don't know how much it is important to point that out in the code of conduct. Uh, usually those things, there's a fine line because it depends on the countries and everything. But um, for instance, the Dirt 3C1, for that reason, as a note, at the end of the introduction, it says, note that this code complements rather than replaces legal rights and obligations pertaining to any particular situation. So I think that's an important thing. This is not meant to, you know, replace any laws or that may be applicable and that will obviously vary from country to country. So I wonder um, if maybe we should add a similar note. I think that's that's a good point to Yeah. So to we highlight. that's one thing we could carry over also if we choose to go with a cloud foundry based one, we could take that piece from the Dirt 3C one and put that in so that this would cover this. So I think, uh, you know, again, I think both are good. Um, I, I I worked a little bit on the Cloud Foundry one, so I, I'm more familiar with that. But, you know, reading through the, the W3C derivative, that's also, I think, good. I, I do like that it's very succinct. Um, so it's a little bit clearer in that respect. Right. Um, and of course, I, I worked in the W3C for a long time as well as you. And uh, sorry. yes, I'm sorry. Are you? I'm in the meeting. I'm just. I can. Okay, I can leave. So 
I don't know. I think we should, uh, and people should uh, speak up if they have any, you know, first reaction or comments. But uh, otherwise, as I said, I think the most practical way forward is to have a quick vote, decide which one to work with as a starting point, and then make adjustments if necessary. There's a mobility center over near the corner. There's a problem that's happening with Hi, this is Vipin. Um, support the uh, shorter W3 C1 um, over the other other one, but you know, like uh, several people have remarked, both are quite similar. Thank you. And this is Mick. Um, as Arno captured. Um, you know, I have a slight preference for the W3C just because it is um, concise. Um, I'm quite happy with both of them. I really like the wording change that that was made for the Cloud Foundry as well. So, um, Stefan here. I'm also fine with both. I would slightly prefer the W3C. And Dave all here, you know, pretty much the same. I agree. Um, W3C already has that that little bit about the the legal side, so that might just be the easier one to do. All right. Any other else? Sounds like there is a slight preference for the W3C one, so. Todd, maybe you could do a roll. Todd, you there? Uh, I'm here. Um, do you want me this to do Mike Dolan. Oh, Go ahead, Mike. Hey, hey Todd, real quick. Um, for those, this is Mike Dolan from Linux Foundation. For those uh, saying they have a preference for the W3C code of conduct, does that also include the glossary? Yeah, I mean, that's one document, right? I don't think you can separate the two. You could make different adjustments to the glossary if you think something is not right, but... Uh, Okay, I just want to make sure we're not just talking about the nine in the code, but also the glossary as well. I think it's the whole document. That's my understanding. Okay. okay. So again, I was hearing a preference for the W3C, but I'd like to have maybe basically all the TSC weigh in, if I'm, unless they'd like more time to think about it. All right, let's put it this way. Is there anyone who would disagree with adopting the W3C derivative? And if you're on mute, you may need to come off. Hello, this is Primrose. Um, I, I, I read through both of them, and to be honest, I found the uh, the one from Cloud Foundry a little bit easier to understand and to follow. Uh, for W3C, it sounded like quite a legal document. I'm not entirely sure why that came across that way. Um, it, the, the, the Cloud Foundry one made it feel more of a community than W3C one. It could just be my perception. So I, I think that's a fair comment, actually. And uh, it's, um, I believe the result is from the breadth of the people involved in the W3C1. W3C is a very internationally oriented uh, organization. They have offices all around the world, and all the different, you know, groups within uh, within W3C were involved in the making of this. 
and it went through a lot of scrutiny. And so I think, you know, that's why they, it's quite crisp, but maybe, yes, like you said, it maybe it, it looks more legal oriented than the, the Cloud Foundry one. Hey, this is Hart here. Um, I was leaning towards the Cloud Found, excuse me, the Cloud Foundry document simply because I was just not a huge fan of the glossary and the W3C documents. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. Okay. Others. So Chris, it sounds to me that there is there are people on both sides. So I think yeah. it might make sense to have an offline poll, and then you know people can vote whether they really object to one or the other, or whether they prefer it, and then based on the uh, results we can decide next time. So I don't know if the Linux Foundation has some poll mechanism that can be used for that, or we can use a doodle poll. Yeah, we can just send a poll out to the TSC mailing list. Um, maybe we include more than, maybe it's just uh, strongly favor W3C, favor okay with W3C, uh, strongly favor Cloud Foundry, okay with Cloud Foundry, just to capture sort of the and, and Mike, I'd open it up to everybody. I mean, I don't think it should be limited to just the TSC members. I'd like to get input from. Yeah, I guess I assumed it was for everybody. Yeah, right. I'll just use the TSC mailing list if that's all right, or do you want me to cross post yeah. it? All right, so let's put out a straw poll. And then, you know, again, I, I would encourage people to, to get in and if they have thoughts about, you know, what we might be able to leverage from the W3C one into the Cloud Foundry or vice versa, you know, make some suggestions. Um, and let's see if we can't wrap this up next week. All right. Uh, what was next? Project proposal template. So Vipin, I think you're next. Yeah. Um, so I did get uh, a few comments, mostly uh, related to the, uh, uh, you know, spelling or uh, other things, but a couple of significant uh, things did crop up. Uh, I have reworked the document um, with uh, the suggestions last time, mostly mm -hmm. the licensing uh, and the uh, trademark uh, stuff has been added, and I tried to make it also function as a template uh, uh, with uh, with the sections in bold and also removed uh, any strong language about uh, using uh, this particular format to handle the solutions, meaning if the solution does not require uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, a certain section to be handled, then uh, left it open in the in the in that sense. Uh, the actual wording is um, uh, the topics given below are just suggestions. Address only if they are relevant to your problem. Uh, so, and it goes through a list of uh, various, um, you know, various possible. Uh, possible sections you should address in the solution. And then uh, the motivation has been separated uh, and kept separate. Uh, one of the things that came up just uh, this morning from Primrose is uh, what is the uh, definition of a, um, you know, team champion. So this thing has come up even before. So the, the technical uh, lead or the technical champion uh, I had put it in there only because I wanted somebody to be driving the pro project proposal instead of it being, uh, so the questions 
you know, instead of it being just loose and uh, nobody's kind of driving the project, it languishes. Uh, the question that came up was, was it somebody who is proposing the, the project or is it somebody from the Hyperledger uh, Technical uh, Steering Committee who will be appointed to be a, a so we, we need a, a clarification on that technical champion bit. Um, if uh, Primo, Primrose wants to um, elaborate on that, she can. Uh, just after I finish my spiel. Uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, why not uh, do it now? Just talk about this technical champion uh, thing. Maybe we should remove it. So we have this concept of maintainers and committers, right? And so the maintainers are basically the ones who are, you know, they're the product uh, leads. Project leads, I should say, for a given component, um, and you know they are the ones that would, you know, um, have the final say in terms of you know what things get merged and so forth. Um, and then there would be out of that there would be a community of contributors and potentially a con community of committers, people who are allowed to commit. But you know, just like in Docker and a few others, we, we, we took the same notion of a maintainer. Now, I guess that could be the same as a champion, but you know, in, in the context here, I suspect that the champion was somebody who was bringing the project forward for consideration. <laughs> Pardon me, for consideration. Um, but I see you have a project champion can change in the middle. So I would, if that was the case, if this is intended to be the the person who's uh, or persons who's got oversight, then they would be, from my perspective, the maintainers. And and typically you'd have multiples, so that you know if somebody gets hit by a bus or changes jobs or whatever, life goes on. As opposed to having a single benevolent dictator kind of a thing for each project. Yeah, we could we could change the language to for it to be a plural rather than singular, <laughs> but. Does the concept have any use, or is it to be made more clear? That's, uh, I mean, you you just made it a little more clear. Uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you was that uh, in the status part, I have a link to the lifecycle uh, proposal that you, that Chris you you uh, created. So mm -hmm. then there's no ambiguity about what status means. In, in that life cycle right. document. Mm -hmm. That's where uh, I, uh, I have left it. Maybe we can continue discussion or maybe we should uh, adopt it, uh, but maybe uh, during the, uh, during that uh, phase to phase is when all, you know, this thing gets nailed down and, uh, and uh, we, uh, we agree well, on, on the proposal. Yeah, I think it's getting close. Um, I think this notion of champion or maintainers, I think we do have to have, you know, an identifier or, you know, of who, who the initial maintainers um, are being proposed. I think that needs to be, again, I'm not sure we have project champion. I think we just identify the maintainers and they're the same as the ones that are bringing the proposal forward. Um, but I think it's getting close. I, you know, I put it, you know, turn it around and ask um, members or the non-members to to weigh in with some thoughts on the proposal. Actually, it's a proposal template. Proposed proposal template. And again, you may be on mute. Hey, this is Mike. I got uh, just a, a question on the list of bullets in the solution space. Um, so it looks like you're covering quite a few things in there, kind of the technology spaces, um, licensing issues, some legal, some logging and traceability, privacy issues, and some things like that. Uh, one thing about these systems uh, that is interesting is the characteristics of the deployment. Um, 
uh, that is not just the component technology, but how the pieces fit together. Could we make sure we include a bullet that captures um, our, as part of the proposal, our vision of how it would be used? Yeah, I, I did. I do think I have it in some form or the other, but I could make it a little more, a um, little more. In fact. The one that's closest is the, the how third to, bullet. The how to was meant to address that, how to host and test the project, or it could uh, include uh, what you just said um, as well, okay. right? Uh, so I, I, I created that new, new bullet there, how to, which is apart from the solution, different from the solution. Um, so it is not only how to host and test the project, but also how to actually use. Is is that what you meant, or is there something I I'm missed? Sorry, I'm just. Yeah, I was looking at the Google Docs right now, and um, the one the bullet that I thought was closest to it was the effects on the network throughput visibility to other participants. Um, so it's it's kind of deployment characteristics, and and I mean this can include everything from. Uh, you know, I think Kristen in, in the IBM white paper talks about uh, the you know, geographically local um, and a certain validator count. Um, there's some implications for things like that as well that are at least characteristics of um, the piece of that technology. Sure, we, I, we'll add it. I'll add it. Thank you. I guess we'll um, defer the final. Uh, sign off until uh, later. I mean, obviously, this doesn't mean that, uh, you know, it cannot be changed later. No, I think it's getting close. So I think we got some good feedback here. I would encourage people to um, you know, review the document again, add any comments and suggestions in the margin, and we'll go through this again uh, next week and try and wrap it up. Uh, so I think the next item is the project lifecycle proposal, and I lost my uh, agenda. There it is. So thanks, Pippin. Um, okay, so the project lifecycle. Um, we we discussed last week that you know in addition to just a proposal template for proposing new projects, um, new components, um, and or work items um, that we also need, especially for a component, you know, uh, for something that um, is manifested in a, in a, in a, in a component in, a, in, a, in its own repository, that we need to have a life cycle for um, these, these things. Um, I think it's likely that, you know, there'll be new components proposed. Um, we'll do refactoring and so forth um, over time, and so things will come and go, ebb and flow, and we'll have an opportunity to potentially deprecate certain things. So I took the uh, Open Daylight um, template, uh, the life cycle that they had, and I adapted it a little bit that way. Um, I think it's the First tall pass where you just came through, um, and I added in uh, a deprecation and end of life phase. Uh, they had a notion in theirs of a top level project. I don't know if we're going to get there yet. Um, we can always adapt um, as appropriate. But you know, I think you know the process is you start with a proposal that fills out the template that uh, Vipin was just proposing. Uh, we'll finalize that. Um, you know, it's got to have those things that we can adapt. This proposal must uh, to align with what Pippin has. Um, and then um, we would have a review by the TSC of the proposal, and the project would either be turned down or um, added into incubation. Uh, that would be the first place that it would go. So that would go into the hyperledger. Hyperledger Incubator, pardon me, org. 
Um, and then, you know, once the project gets to a, a sort of mature status, the maintainers of that project can then request that it have a graduation review by the TSC. And, you know, again, at that point, you have to have function and code base test coverage that's commensurate with what the other mature projects have. Now, again, for the first ones, that'll be, um, I think, we'll have to sort of eyeball that. Um, we want to have an active and diverse community of developers. You don't want to have a, a project exiting incubation where it's just, you know, one vendor or just a couple of individuals. It really needs to be a diverse community of interest. And um, and, and the other point that they had in Open Daylight was that it followed um, the mature re release process for at least a couple. Um, and again, we'll have to, you know, um, we have to define our own release process. Um, but, you know, you'd want a, an incubating project to essentially be uh, demonstrating that it's essentially already a mature project. Then the TSC would review and approve that. If they do, it becomes a mature project, and it goes from the incubator org into the, the main org. Um, there's a little bit of work associated with that because of the nature of Go. We have to change a few things around. but. Um, so then a project that's mature uh, and goes through its life cycle, at some point in time, you know, we're going to potentially want to deprecate um, that, that repository for whatever reason. And so then we go through, and I, I, I recommended a six-month period. Uh, we could make it shorter or longer. That's, I think that's up to us. Um, where we give notice to the public that, hey, we're going to deprecate this guy means that after that six month period it won't be maintained um, and then uh, once it goes through that and then it goes into end of life and essentially we archive it it's no longer actively developed or maintained so that's um, that's the proposal and I'd be interested in thoughts from others so Chris, there is one comment that I think is worth uh, mentioning here on the document, and I, I want to thank the people who pointed out typos and kind of errors, and I tried to address those. But uh, there is one question that remains, and I apologize. I, I had by mistake I, I first clicked on resolve, so I just reopened it. But uh, the question has to do with how much do we talk about the transitions between the different phases? And it, the document that it stands doesn't talk so much about the transition except for the very first one, going from the proposal to the incubation phase. And you might infer from just reading the document that this is a linear progression only. When the question pointed out, uh, you know, what that was pointed out was. Well, there may be cases where you go through the same stages several times. You can imagine cycles and the like. Sure. So, I mean, the document, I think, doesn't touch that point. I don't know if people feel like this needs to be done or not. I mean, we could also have some general statement saying, you know, there is no, no particular, uh, uh, you know, transition path is implied here. and. Uh, Different possible path might be taken depending on, on a case by case basis or something along those lines. So you're referring then to like if you're going from incubation to mature, the TSC may say, no, you're not ready yet. Exactly. You stay in incubation for another period and then you come back. And I think, oh, I would have thought that was implied. And we can certainly make it clear that there's no guarantee that a request to graduate will be granted. Um, um, I don't know, we maybe, maybe we could look at something like the ASF to see if they've got a process. I didn't notice anything in the open daylight that addressed that aspect of things. I have uh, like, seen... I don't know. Hi, this is Bippin again. Uh, I have seen in some other places uh, actual state transition diagrams addressing this, but I mean, I don't know how far you want to go. It all depends. Yeah. 
Exactly. That's why I, I'd rather not go there personally. I thought it was better to just describe the different states and try to keep them fairly broad so that, you know, we don't get... Because, I mean, you could invent a lot more phases too, but, you know, there's a limit to... I think we need to find the... Now, you know, something that I haven't put in here, but, you know, again, I would ask people to give a little bit of thought. Going through a deprecation process has an impact on the end users. Um, you know, we may want to add in that, you know, a request to go from mature to deprecated maybe needs to uh, in incorporate or include some sort of a um, end user outreach that, you know, gets a sense for what the impact would be. Uh, and maybe the TSC needs to, you know, make uh, to perform that, that part, that role. So, I, I mean, I'm happy to make it a little bit clearer that, you know, it's, it's not a guarantee. You may have to, you know, repeat the proposal phase a couple of times until it gets approved. You may have to repeat the graduation request a couple of times until you're really mature and then um, I think same thing for deprecated. If the end user community comes back and says, no way, Jose, you know, and doesn't go deprecated. Or, you know, maybe the time, maybe the extent, or the, the period is extended. So, thoughts on that? Hey, Chris, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's a very important point, and I would agree to include some verbiage to that extent in here. That, that's Dave? That's Dave, yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, any other thoughts? All right. All right, well, I'll um, invite everybody again to say, you know, take a, a close look, add some comments, um, uh, if you have any, and I'll uh, I'll try and address a couple of points that we talked about here. Um, I think that's the agenda. Todd, did we have anything else? Uh, no, that, that covered everything. Has anyone else got any other business? Chris, uh, I would like to chip in. Uh, I, I was uh, I had a terrible network connection before, so I, I missed uh, the last question to the agenda planning of uh, um, the hackathon. Uh, I'd I'd like to just.